All right, to start with now that I've got my planning sheet all filled out, so I've got all of my keyframes on here, all of my spacing done, uh, I'm going to start translating this into uh, the computer. But I'm going to show you how that I would set up the file first before I begin. Uh, and then I'm just going to pause the video, do the work, and come back to you. So here's the ball in the scene. Um, I've made another polygon plane back here just so I can have a larger grid. Because one of the issues I'm having is that uh, I've got these distances marked out in my planning sheet of 26 units, 13 units, whatever that means. But these were um, widths of the ball that I used to measure with. So what I want to do is I want my file to have that same unit of measurement. Uh, and how I can do that is if I take a look at my ball here, I can see that my ball is two units across here, roughly two units across. So what I have to do first is scale the ball down using this global controller here at the bottom. Uh, so that I can have the ball being one grid unit and by doing that I make all of the measurements for myself much easier. So now we can see that if I move this ball adjacent to one of these grid units you can see that it's one unit across. So that way I can just measure out all of my spacing very very easily. I'm starting at zero zero in the origin so it should make moving the thing across the stage very simple um, and with as little guesswork as possible so I can make it look like a genuine article. Okay, so as I start here, I'm going to uh, pause the video, do all of my uh, first blocking using my chart, and then I will start up again. So I thought I'd just show for a minute what my progress has been. So I put in all of the major keyframes, and here they are playing. Uh, no graph work, so no easing at all yet. But one of the things that I came across is that in my chart, I had marked down after the height of all my principal bounces, that this, there was a diminishing dribbling before uh, rolling out screen. And I didn't mention how tall these dribbles would be uh, because they were going to have to diminish from this unit of three down to almost nothing by the end of this. But that's not really worthwhile to mark down because um, it's better to use the graph editor in Maya to help do that. So here I've got the Y translate graph for the ball that I just marked in. As you can see down in this dribbling section, all of these bounces are of the uniform height because my intention is to go through and adjust all of these by hand. So for instance, I would grab uh, all of these, use my movement tool and hold shift, and just move them all down and one by one deselect the last one and move them down in something that I think is proportional uh, for each step like this. So I can go ahead and just do this uh, right here. I'm holding control to deselect the previous. Uh, the previous bounds. And so I can get closer and closer to a completely flat movement here. And I'm trying to reduce them somewhat proportionally down to a very, very small amount. So here we're on the final bounce. As you can see down here on the scale, we're down to 0.2 and less. Uh, so this is not really something that you should attempt to uh, estimate from your video. This would rather be something to use your logic and say that, okay, I know this is going to reduce in a pattern, and so from this point to this point, it has to reduce down to nothing because after this point, it's going to be rolling. So I'm just going to do that visually here, save myself a headache, and allow myself to make some artistic decisions as I'm working through this. Uh, in addition, this is how my graph looks now. Uh, based on all of my observations. And it's a fairly nice looking graph. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, but what I could do is I could use uh, my uh, ability to make decisions at, at this point and adjust some of these points also if I wanted to. So I could decide to make this diminish maybe a little bit quicker uh, in this portion of the bounce just so it's more smoothly transitions down into these um, smaller, tinier little bounces here. Uh, we can take a look at what that looks like briefly. can see large bounces going down to nice, small, rapid little bounces here. Another thing I didn't mention was how far the ball rolled after um, these little dribbles were completed. And so I just took a look at the video and estimated how far that I thought they would roll. And it looked like they went another maybe third of the distance um, out to the ending point, so I put it out there. All right, so now I'm going to work through and do all of my uh, tangent handles uh, and show you the result of that. Right, here's the state of the 
Y translate graph now. So I've, just like in the previous videos, freed the tangent weight, stretched them out, broken the tangents on the impacts, and pinched them towards the center to get this nice rainbow arc look. Um, I didn't bother to edit some of these smaller uh, bounces down here because they're single frame movements. So you can see the graph still looks rather ugly down here, but these are single frame movements, and so we're not going to see the effect of those edits, and so I didn't bother to do that. Here's the translate X graph. Let me first make sure I have everything selected properly. Okay. And the translate X graph, actually, maybe it's translate Z. Oh, let me find out. What oh, should be translate X? Hmm. That doesn't seem to be displaying right now. Try one more time. Yeah, it's here. It's just not allowing me to use the F key. But uh, here's the graph for translate X. Um, and I took the liberty of doing a little tiny rollback here at the end. So we've got this final. Um, point at which it rolls back on itself and then comes to a stop here. Both of these have flat tangents, so it's a nice smooth transition. Go ahead and show the effect of that. Just thought it would look a little bit more lively if it kind of rolled to a halt there at the end. There we go, and it starts coming back. So right now I have no rotation, so I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, right here in front of you to try out the rotation because it is one of the trickier parts of doing this. So I'm going to use the rotation controller here so that later on I can use this to possibly curve the path just like it was um, doing in the actual parking lot that those guys uh, shot the video in. So for my first key I'm going to rotate this uh, let's say backwards somewhat so it looks like it's rotate uh, Z. So I'm going to rotate this backwards somewhat just to throw it off that uh, straight horizontal line and I'm going to go ahead and key, key select it on that. Uh, then we need to go to the final rotation point all the way down here at 281 and take a guess how much I need to rotate this ball but I do want it to terminate at the exact same point so here I'm gonna grab um, this controller middle mouse dragging to the left some number um, it looks like I'm up around 800 and something here at that point so I'll go ahead and key selected and we'll see how that does I won't bother with the rollback just yet uh, until I see that this portion is working correctly so let's see if I can play this back. You can see it's rotating rather slowly, um, so I'm going to have to increase that number quite a bit. Uh, also, part of the problem is that the uh, tangent is not set yet for this, so whereas it should be slowing down here, it's not, so we might be getting a uh, unreliable result. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that up to a flat tangent, just kind of mimicking the previous graph. And what I did do for the previous graph as well, since I can free the tangent weights, is I did squeeze this in just a little bit so that it stops more abruptly here, and it gives it a little bit more time to rock to a halt in the second part of this. So let's go ahead and try that and see how it looks. A little bit of odd playback probably from my recording session. Alright, I'm going to pause the recording here and see what's going on. Alright, well it looks like I won't be able to hit the play button here, but that's fine. I can always just scrub through the timeline here. We can see later on in this roll here that it is still sliding on the ground there. You can see how the ring is out of sync with the grid. So I do need to increase the amount of rotation. So I can just do that by dragging this point upward, some amount, and then trying again. Looks like we're a little bit closer. I'll go ahead and hone in on this point over here so that we can see that effect. Uh, still sliding on the ground quite a bit. I'll adjust that even higher. Make sure that I can readjust this portion of the graph. Here we go. There's that portion of the graph just to make it one continuous movement as it should be. And let's take another look. 
So that's much better than it was. Maybe a little slow still, but I think you guys get the idea. I'll do all of these minute adjustments, changing that value, tweaking the graphs just a little bit until it finally comes to uh, what looks like a nice contacting uh, roll along the ground there. And then I can do my final rollback position.